All right, guys, so we've been going back together, been making pretty good progress. Uh, almost there, almost got it done. Um, we made one modification. Uh, we had to go with a different gas tank. So that's uh, what we're using. No, I'm just kidding. We so the valve on the uh, the tank that's supposed to be on it, it it went bad. It was we had closed it, took the line off, noticed it was leaking a little bit, and thought, well, maybe when we opened it back up, it would quit leaking, and that was not the case. So we have a new valve for the tank coming. So this is what we rigged up um, just to to get it running, so we could see how it run. We don't recommend trying this at home. <laughs> no. Um, it's perfectly safe. I mean, you know, look at it. It's, it's, it's perfectly safe. For the most part. Anyways, we were... <laughs> Anyways, we were able to at least get the engine running. Um, we were really happy about that. We're just waiting on a few small things. One of them is the valve, which is this right here. Uh, so, how this works is you pull that down to shut it and then you can flip it open to uh to open the valve it's because it's like literally right here up underneath the valve's cover so you there it would not be very easy to spin something in or out or anything like that so they make these nice little valves unfortunately this one is not very old but it is uh it is no good so it was leaking out of the stem right here really bad so it's a real nice concept. I just kind of got my thumb there. <laughs> it's a real nice concept uh, if it works. So we're getting a new one. Hopefully it works and uh, we'll take care of that problem. I have a few more things we're waiting on for this. Um, the garage is kind of a mess right now. This is the little dozer we are working on. We pulled the engine out of that <clears throat> and we found the problem. So this is the shaft coming from the clutch housing and this is the shaft going to um into the transmission so this repair had been done by somebody probably because the splines were stripped out so they they milled a square coupling together to keep these together so whether it was not milled square or something else because one of the other problems is the transmission housing three out of the four bolts were stripped and then the fourth one uh the housing was actually broke out in the corner probably won't be able to see it but that corner down there so and then the other three other two bolts for sure were completely stripped and then one there was just a little bit well that is what holds this piece and we're kind of wondering if this is even kind of like sagging down putting stress on this regardless it broke it off right at the transmission right where that um bearing is and then uh it broke it off here as well so the bad part <clears throat> you cannot get new shafts I found this one used for like $1,200. I never even could find that one. We probably could have somebody make them, but it would be very expensive. And <clears throat> the man who owns this dozer did not pay a whole lot for it, and he does not put a whole lot of money into it. So we are going to either part it out or scrap it. Well, he is going to. So um, unfortunately, uh, <clears throat> we found out the problem, and we are not going to be able to uh, fix it. So anyways there's the engine out of that then we come over here to the white <clears throat> we got the pto unit back in i did not get a video of putting that back together the the clutches are in here um we got we got the book we were able to look through all that make sure it was all right we did end up ordering an input bearing for it um because when i tore that apart after we got the book and the rest of the parts um we noticed that it wasn't in great shape and since we had it tore down we decided it was a good time to replace it so we're hoping that uh we get this thing back running real soon and that uh it works good and we don't have any problems so there was a few little things oh one of the things is this is the old stack somebody had recently done this and i don't know if i mentioned that this that or not but uh they had put nine steel pieces in uh and then seven fibers 
So we got the new kit and it came with eight steels and seven fibers. And so I thought, okay, that's, that's, uh, it's different. What's right. So I looked at the book and it said, you're supposed to have eight steels and seven of the fibers. So for some reason, I'm not sure why there was an extra steel in this stack that was in there. So that probably was definitely not good and could have been a problem. So we're hoping it's uh, good to go. So we should be able to get this done probably today. Hoping to get a few more things done on the white. And uh, then we're also going to work on cleaning the garage up today because it's kind of getting to be a mess. We got our 1206 International. We got to get in, um, get that split and put a clutch in it. Uh, and then it won't be too long. We'll be getting the planner in here. I ordered all the parts for that. Um, literally the back of my one pickup is full of, of boxes right now uh, for the planner. Um, so we'll be getting that in pretty soon. Going through that, we'll probably probably got at least a week's worth, week's worth of work on that. Um, oh, what are some other... Oh, our 706 International. We got to get in, it in here and work on the hydraulics on it. We got a valve that's leaking really bad on it. So we'll be bringing that in, doing some work to it. The 1206, the planner. Uh, I know there's something else we got to work on. Let's see. Oh, my dad's one truck. Get in here, re do put all new bolts in the in the head for the exhaust manifold and all new exhaust manifold gaskets as well. And uh, hoping that'll be good. So yeah, we've got a uh, we've got a lot of work to do. It's uh, huh. uh, these three projects or at least two projects have been kind of slow as we've been waiting on parts for a very long time for just one thing or the other. A little Ford has just been, uh, you know, a bunch of little things um, we've been waiting on. Oh, one of the, those things, we had to order a new governor spring. So this spring apparently had gotten broke off at some point and just spun into the governor rod, which is that rod right there, which in theory you would think would be fine. But the problem is it's not let our, letting our governor rod float like it needs to so the governor help regulate the uh the engine to give it power not give it power depending on the type of load that's on it so that but that has to be able there's a centrifugal there's a centrifugal piece up in the timing housing that that slides onto the camshaft and so it has to be able to move freely though so what it does is there's a spring this is your rod your throttle rod so there's a spring on here so what it does is that centrifugal clutch moves this which in turn pushes more fuel or less fuel to the engine giving it less or more power i hope i explained that in a way that you guys can understand because i felt like as i just tried to explain it like i didn't and it's very easy for me to understand but <laughs> trying to get me <laughs> to get you guys to understand can sometimes be a little bit difficult. <laughs> Anyways, the biggest problem is this spring has to be able to let this rod move freely so that it can give more or less fuel when it needs it. So this is the carburetor rod hooked down here on the bottom. So being that this spring was broke off and they just twisted it in, there's no give. It just wants to it just is, it is, there's just not enough give, so. Fuel tank's back on. Hood's on, air cleaner's back on. Just a couple more things to do and then we'll be firing her up so you guys can hear her run. All right, so we got the Ford 4000 all done. We're gonna run it so you can uh, hear how it runs.